Hello, I am still Siddharth and I will be solving problem five as well. So let's read the problem. We have triangle ABC with orthocenter H. Always good to just mark all angles. And BEF for the feet of the altitudes from ABC, um, it's just cyclic. If if the if the labeling is not cyclic, leave the exam. It's not worth your time. Uh, let L M N be midpoints of A H. Sorry, H L F and N A H E F B C respectively. Let X Y be feet of altitudes from L and N. Okay, so we draw this line. BF and we drop altitudes or perpendiculars from L and from N and they want us to and we call these X and Y and they want us to prove that X M Y is 90 right X M perpendicular X M Y X M Y 90 Okay, so now the first thing to notice here is this is commonly kind of known fact and is a, is a fact that you'll use over and over again is that because of these so many 90s being involved in the other center, you get lots of cyclic quadrilaterals and lots of diameters. So for example, AFH is equal to AEH is equal to 90. So AFEH is a circle and uh, AH is the diameter. Similarly, we get BFEC because BFC is equal to BEC and BC is the diameter. And just look at and looking at what they've given us, they've given us the midpoints of the two diameters, right? L is the midpoint of AH, N is the midpoint of BC. So they've given us the centers of these circles. So L is the center, center, and N is the center of this. So you have the centers of two circles and they've given the midpoint of the chord, the common chord, right? The common chord is EF midpoint is M. So we know that LM is perpendicular EF and NM is equal perpendicular EF because the perpendicular from the center to the midpoint, uh, the, the, the bi perpendicular bisector of any chord passes through the center. And so we have that NM is perpendicular and LM is perpendicular, both perpendicular EF. So they must be collinear, right? 290 is added to 180. Get this. And at this point, I'll, I'll draw a slightly zoom bigger diagram just because it's a little cramped at the moment. So you have midpoints and this one. Right? And L, M, N, the important points, and you have this 90. And note that we have L, M, we have these 90s at M, and they've made us drop up indicators, right? And that automatically will give us some cyclic quadrilaterals. In general, when you have 90s, you have cyclic quadrilaterals. So this is dropping here, 90. This is dropping here, 90. So X, Y. We know that L X F M is cyclic, and because L X F is ninety by definition, and L M F is ninety as we just proved. And similarly, we have that M F Y N is cyclic because F Y N is ninety and F M N is ninety. And at this point, we we we're almost done, right? We just want angle X M Y. Angle X and Y, but angle X and Y is very gettable from these two cyclic quadrilaterals. Uh, there's many ways to go about this angle chase. You just need to do it. You just look at what X and Y kind of goes up to. So one one of the quickest ways is to just notice that X M Y 90 is equivalent to M X Y plus M Y X 90. Just by angle sum and we note that we basically know what mxy and myx are because of the cyclic quadrilaterals 
mxy is equal to mlf equal to angle mlf and note that we know what mlf is right it's half of elf which is twice of eaf so this is just angle a right because elf is the angle subtended by the chord at the center so it's twice of a because this is a circle as i mentioned earlier so since that's a circle eaf twice of it is elf and we're taking half of that so we're back at a so mxy is equal to a mxy is equal to a and similarly myx is equal to mnf is equal to mnf and same diff you have half of the angle subtended at the center which is basically the angle subtended at the circle because the cyclicity so is equal to angle e b f right but what is ebf it's just 90 minus a right because we know that this is 90 by definition e is the foot of the altitude so this angle it will be 90 minus a right angle sum in a b e and so we have mxy is a myx is 90 minus a and we're done right because they add up to 90 we're done here the main thing was really just wherever you get 90 you get a cyclic quadrilateral if you just keep noticing that and have the wherewithal to keep angle chasing, you will eventually get the answer. You don't have to get exactly this way. You could look at XMF, go to XLF, this, and just you can solve for basically all the angles that you need to solve for. So yeah, that's uh, that's it for this problem. It's relatively straightforward as long as you notice these cyclicities. And a general advice for that is just mark all angles and. And you should be looking, mark an angle chase without really any plan. Uh, just finding angles is good in and of itself, even if there's no direct claims that you're trying to prove. So yeah, now we'll move on to the next problem.